All right, I'm going to ask everyone to stand up on your feet. We're going to play a little game of would you rather. So if you would rather the first option, hands on shoulders. If you would rather the second option, hands on heads, okay? So hands on shoulders for the first one, hands on heads for the second one. Would you rather today go to university or go back to kindergarten? Which one would you rather? Back to kindergarten. Um, teachers and staff, you are more than welcome to play as well. Yes. Hey. Okay, so uh, university, not so keen. Lots of people want to go back to kindergarten. Okay, hands down. Would you rather win $25,000 or your best friend win $100,000? <laughs> some people are like, can I do somewhere in the middle? Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> All right, hands down. Would you rather have a bunch of friends, just a big bunch of friends, or would you rather one really good friend? Which one would you rather? One really good friend, a bunch of friends, yep. I'm only doing one hand because I have a microphone, but you can do both hands. All right, hands down. Last question, last question. Would you rather share your lunch with someone who doesn't have lunch or give them money to go to the canteen? Give them your money to go to the canteen and buy their own lunch. <laughs> All right, you guys can take a seat. It's interesting, um, in case you didn't kind of pick up a theme, it's all about what we would do with others. And um, I want to tell you a story today, and I'm going to need some help telling this story. This is a super famous story, all right? It is a story from the Bible that Jesus told. It is also a story that is used right around the world on the news. You can hear it all the time. Whenever someone does an act of kindness, they will tell this story. So one day, a lawyer went up to Jesus and he said, Jesus, what must I do to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Or what must I do to be saved? And Jesus looked at him and he was a lawyer. So he knew the law of the Jews. And he said, well, what does the Bible say? What does the law say? And this lawyer said, well, it says to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength. Oh, and also love your enemies. Oh, not your enemies, <laughs> love your neighbor. It does say love your enemies. That's in another part of the Bible for another day. But it says love your neighbor. And so Jesus says, yeah, cool. That's, that's the right answer. So go and do that. And then the lawyer says, but Jesus, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus tells this story. So one day, there was a traveler traveling from one city to the next. So can I get my traveler to come on up? Can everyone say, go traveler? Thank you, traveler. Come on up. And he's traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho on a very dangerous road. You can just travel around me while I'm telling this part of the story, traveler. Thank you so much. Doing amazing. We can't travel very far these days, so go for it. Travel around the stage. Um, and then on this very dangerous road one day, some robbers came out and they appeared. Robbers come out and appear and they attacked this man. So can everyone go, ooh. And they attacked this man and they like, they started taking his belongings. So they, they took his water bottle, how dare they? And they kind of like attacked him. And then, oh, are we done? Sorry, okay, yes, yes, they, yep, you can go. And he must have struggled because they started to like beat him up and he was left on the side of the road, basically left for dead. And then a priest came along. Now, a priest was someone who worked in the temple, who knew the law, knew the law that we had just talked about, about loving your neighbor. And he should have known what to do. But he looked at this person, saw that he was in need, and he walked to the other side of the road and kept on going. Can everyone go... Thank you, priest. Then a Levite came, another person that worked in the temple, another person that should have known what to do about loving your neighbor. That Levite looked at this person, saw that he was all like bloody and bruised and oh, didn't really want anything to do with him, walked to the other side of the road and said, see ya. Can everyone say, see ya? Thank you, Levite. 
Then someone else came. Now, we talked about this nationality yesterday. We talked about, does anyone remember the, the name of these, na this nationality? The Samaritans. Yes, thank you so much. So someone from that culture and that nation, a Samaritan came along. Now, were the Samaritans and the Jews, were they friends? No, they were enemies, okay? So a Samaritan came along, saw this person, saw that they needed help, and they went over. And they attended to their wounds and bound them up with anything that they had. And then they carried him over to an innkeeper. Do I have an innkeeper? All right. So basically someone who kind of looks after a, a hotel or something and took him to the innkeeper and gave the Samaritan. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just wait, 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 wait. One second, one second. And the, and the Samaritan gave the innkeeper all of their money. Isn't that good? Aren't you glad you stayed on stage for that? It's so cool. Gave them all their money and said, please look after him. And if I owe you any more money, then when I come back, I'll pay you the rest. Thank you, guys. Can everyone give him a round of applause? Now you can exit the stage. Thank you so much. All right, so this is a story that we would have heard many times before. And lots of times, like when something happens and someone shows kindness or anything like that on the news, they will say, it's a classic Good Samaritan story. And we know that about it. So Jesus is telling this story for the first time in front of the lawyer, and there's always a bit of a crowd hanging around Jesus. And get this, when I was studying this story, the, the priest and the Levite from the story were in the crowd when Jesus was telling this story because it was actually a story that happened. So it was kind of like current news around the circles of people living at that time. So he tells this story and then he turns to the lawyer and he said, who was the neighbor? Who was the one that showed love in that story? And the lawyer's like, drats, I'm gonna have to say the people that I don't, really don't like to say. And he said, it was the, the one that showed kindness. He couldn't actually even say Samar the Samaritan. And Jesus said, yeah, the one that showed kindness is the one that showed love to their neighbor. You know, when I was in primary school, um, I was in year three. Does anyone remember being in year three? It's so the best, okay? I love hanging out with the primary school kids at our school. And um, I'm a chaplain, by the way, in case that I haven't already said that. I'm a, I'm, I do what these cool guys get to do every single day. I do that in our school in Newcastle back home. And um, so I was in year three at the time and I had this best friend. Do you guys remember how quick we became best friends with someone in primary school. Do you guys remember that? Like you would like color in together, or you'd like play a sport outside and you're like, oh my gosh, we're best friends. Like it was like so easy to become best friends with someone back in the day. So I became best friends with another guy in, in my class and his name was Jared and everything was cool and awesome. And then at recess and lunch, we would go out and we would never hung out at recess. He would go to his friends and I would go to mine and that was just kind of what we did. And then, his older brother was in year five. Now, you know how when you're in year three, year fives look like they are so much older than us? Do you guys remember that? Okay, it'll be the same here in high school. Um, the way they, the year tens, the way you guys look at the year twelves, do you think that they're like practically adults? <laughs> or how about the way the year nines look at the year sevens? They're like, oh, the year sevens, that's so two years ago, okay? So two years makes such a difference when you're in school. It doesn't make that much of a difference when you get out of school, just a little FYI there. But in primary school, year three and year five was like a massive gap. So his big brother would come along who was in year five and he started calling me names. Now, I was born with hair on my body, as everyone else was born with hair on their body, but my hair is black, so it was really noticeable. So he'd call me things like gorilla, mm, so fun to be called an animal. Um, he'd call me things like hairy canary, yeah, really, really cool. And um, then this movie came out around this time called Godzilla. I wonder if you've ever heard of a movie called Godzilla before. Yeah, yeah. Well, they rhymed it with my name, Priscilla Godzilla. I was like, thank you. And um, it was so, it was really hurtful. Like I'd go home and I'd cry and I'd be really, really cut because 
I was getting called all these names. And I think as much as it hurt my feelings and as much as it was like really sad that it happened, we actually called that teasing back in the day. We never used the word bullying. That wasn't a thing when I was in primary school. It was called teasing. But as much as that hurt and the names hurt me and it really sucked to be called these terrible names, I think what hurt me the most was that the guy that was calling me all these names, his younger brother was supposed to be my friend and he did nothing. And I read this statistic that says that nearly 90% of the time, nearly 90% of the time that someone is bullied or someone is called a name or spoken to like they are less than, nearly 90% of the time that, that that happens, someone is watching and doing nothing about it. And you know, that's really hard because when you're the one who's being picked on or saying or said things about that is not, it's not easy for you to take, you want someone to stand up for you. You want someone, and I would have loved if my friend had just said, hey, like stop, or that's not cool, or don't do that. He, he actually never did. And I wonder if there are people that you are out there right now and you are listening to this and maybe you have been called something, or maybe you have been there when someone else has been called something and maybe we've not said anything. You know, all this week we've been talking about living your best life and, and I hope that you've been encouraged by the music and the dramas and the talks about how Jesus can come in and help you live your best life. But in this story, he's actually saying that maybe living your best life is stepping in for someone else and helping them and showing them kindness and allowing them to live their best life because they know that you have their back. Maybe, just maybe... Whatever faith you come from, wherever your culture is, whatever your background is, we all know what it's like to show kindness, to stand in for someone and say, hey, let me help you. What can I do? Now, I'm not encouraging you in any way to go and like make fights or anything like that because that's not what that's about. But maybe in the moment, if someone is being mistreated, we could say, hey, how can I support you? How can I help you through this time? Because although in that story, Jared never helped me, my friend, he never really stood up for me. There have been plenty of other times when I've had someone show me that kindness. So I am keen as to encourage you to show someone else kindness. Because as much as we want to let all of this transform who we are, and make us better, we actually also want to create better humans in this world, that we can also step out of our journey and show someone else kindness. Right now, I want to pray for every single one of us, but I want to particularly pray that if any of us so choose, that we will open our eyes as we walk around our school today, as we go to classes, as we get our bags and our books and we go and we might have tests, we might have assignments, we might have chores when we get home from work, uh, from school. Does anyone have chores? Does anyone get a list of chores from their mom? Yep, that was me in high school. Whatever we're doing, that we will open our eyes to see how we can show kindness to someone else. And if there's anyone here that wants to be part of that, wants to say, yep, I want to step out and I want to show kindness to someone else. I want you to just put your hand up and say, yep, that's me. I want to show kindness to someone. See, it's not super popular to show kindness to someone else, but it doesn't matter whether we've put our hand up publicly or we've done it in our heart. It's all good. The point is that we can live our best life by helping someone else live their best life. So why don't you close your eyes with me and bow your heads wherever you're at. Dear Jesus, we come before you right now and there are some of us here that have been really hurt by others. There are some of us that have been called names and it has been not cool. And God, right now, I just want to acknowledge that and know that it has not been an easy road for some of us. But God, there are also some of us here that are wanting to show that kindness to someone else. 
that are saying, yep, I want my eyes to be open so I can see when I can help someone else on the journey. And we don't know what the day is going to look like. We don't know where we're going to go. But we pray that you will open our eyes and our heart to see the need and to show love to our neighbor. We thank you for who you are and we thank you for showing us kindness. We love you, God, and we say together, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys.